Um, as I always say, a budget is a statement of values, and President Biden's budget tells working people and families very clearly and simply, we have your back, and we're going to be building a stronger future together. You just don't get a sharper study of contrast than President Biden setting forward a budget that protects and strengthens Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, while former President Trump goes on TV to say he thinks you can, quote, do a lot in terms of cutting these programs. But while the leader of the Republican Party wants to pull the rug out from under families and seniors, President Biden understands the source of our nation's strength is our people, and investing in working families does pay off in a major way. This budget offers a roadmap for progress on tackling the housing crisis that is crunching Americans' pocketbooks, and we are really feeling this in my home state of Washington. Tackling the child care crisis like I have long championed so working families nationwide can find the child they care they need for about $10 a day. Continuing our historic work tackling the climate crisis and rebuilding our nation's infrastructure, including funds for the Howard Hansen Dam Fisk Passage Project in Washington State, which I thank you for. Um, and there is a lot more, like critical investments to bolster our national security by strengthening our military and our alliances, which are so crucial. And President Budget, Budget recognizes it is absolutely possible to invest in the American people and put our country on a more sustainable fiscal footing. This budget also lowers the deficit by simply closing ridiculous loopholes that billionaires count on to avoid paying the taxes they already owe and ensuring the ultra-rich and largest corporations finally start paying their fair share. That should not be too much to ask. There's never any good reason billionaires should be paying less than firefighters or teachers or nothing at all. So, Director Young, good to have you here today. Thank you for all this work. As you well know, we just passed the first slate of the FY24 bills, which conform to the Fiscal Responsibility Act caps and the agreement that accompanied that. Those constraints made for pretty tough funding decisions, as I have said repeatedly, but we did manage to hammer out serious bipartisan bills that protect key investments, and we are now hard at work to pass the rest. In FY25, we're going to be facing an even tougher set of constraints within the second year of CAPS and fewer adjustments to make use of from the outset. Can you talk with us about how President Budgets pr protects and strengthens our core investments, particularly on the non-defense side, while working within those CAPS? What are the tools that you all employed to make sure we are able to pass a strong set of funding bills within those tough CAPS? Uh, Chair Murray, uh, one, uh, thank you for what you did last week with the six bills. I know the, the final six are underway uh, and your committee's hard at work. Uh, Non-defense discretionary, uh, sometimes high. What we're talking about, we're talking about veterans funding. Uh, we're talking about Department of Homeland Security, Child Care, Department of Education, Pell Grants. Uh, these are absolutely critical programs. It's the smallest amount we spend in the federal government. Uh, and we often find ourselves struggling because uh, we had to enact budget caps uh, to make sure these critical programs, frankly, both parties have historically supported. In this budget, because uh, a lot of the, the, the debt deal had adjustments to make sure adequate funding could be had, were used to make sure your 24 process could happen, this budget shows a path by using adjustments that have been historically been used, uh, uh, like changes in mandatory programs, uh, and emergency spending where necessary. Congress has used both of those tools in the past in appropriations bills, and it's going to be needed more than ever uh, at higher levels to ensure that uh, programs, uh, NIH, uh, and every other place uh, that has bipartisan support isn't, isn't cut unnecessarily. So those are the same tools we used in our Absolutely. appropriations committee last summer. We will, need more, last we will need more of those because uh, most of the offsets your committee typically uses to make sure non-defense programs are uh, continued and members' priorities are taken care of are gone, frankly. And we will have to do more changes in mandatory programs, uh, lovingly known as CHIMPS to those of us who work on, on this, and emergency spending will be necessary. Okay, thank you. And uh, quickly, I just want to thank you on Hanford. I, you know how important that is to me, and just always ask for your continued work with us as we make sure that that critical funding is there. 
And I also want to thank you again for the Howard Hansen Dam Fish F Passage Facility Project. I'm glad that the President heard me on how critical that is, and I really appreciate your working with us. Thank you.